Good evening, everybody. Where did I go? Oh, here I am. All right. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night in the Word. And uh, we're going to start by singing a song. So if you need to look up the words on your phone or somewhere, what a beautiful name. Uh, many of us know it. But I want to just uh, worship the Lord while people are logging on here tonight. And then I'll greet everyone in just a few minutes. So, Dear Father, Lord, thank you for this night. We pray your blessing over our time together. Lord, be glorified in everything that we say and do here. Receive our praises, Lord, and speak to us through your word as we get into it later. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ, my 
my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord Jesus, we gather tonight in your name, under your banner, under the banner of your love and your cross, and we welcome your presence, Lord, here tonight. Receive our praises, Lord, speak to our hearts as we get into your word. Lord, if there's any particular need out there, we just lift that up before your throne tonight ask you, Lord, to intervene, bring peace, bring healing, bring direction and guidance, bring your provision, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. As we were singing your name, Lord, it is so good to sing your name, the name of Jesus, the wonderful name of Jesus. Father, we do want to pray for uh, Gary and Joanne Feldman tonight. We pray, Lord, for your healing touch to be upon them and uh, that your provision would be there for them as they, as they deal with their sicknesses. And Gary gets ready to uh, travel to New York again for some treatments. The Lord, just heal this dear couple in the name and authority of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for the Arsenal family, uh, Bob and Sylvia, Linda's mom and dad, we just pray for healing for them. For Bob, Lord, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, Lord, every way, just touch him and heal him. Lord, for our brother Adrian Velez, we pray for healing as he goes through the chemo. We pray for John Eastwood, for Sandy Whitney, Lord, just touch these dear, dear brother and sister. Touch uh, Stacy Amendola Johnson, Lord, heal her of her, the complications with Lyme disease and some of the things that's going on with her, Lord. We just pray for your healing touch to be on there. Lord, if there's anyone else that was not mentioned by name, we know that you know who that is. So we just welcome your healing touch upon us. Lord, if anyone needs to be picked up, maybe they're down, down in the dumps, we pray, Lord, that you would lift up the hands that hang down, lift up the face that's 
that's that's down and distraught and let us let us lift up our eyes and see you on your throne and let us be encouraged by that lord for anyone that may need a miracle with their finances or with employment we pray for that as well so thank you lord for all this lord we pray your blessing upon our our time tonight wednesday night in the word Lord, bring everyone on here that you want to be on here. Use this live stream to promote yourself and uh, to teach others about your love. So thank you, Lord. Anoint this time together. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And good evening once again, everyone. Let's see. I had a little note here. Uh, <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord. Uh, Tony, I, uh, well, let me go back to the beginning. <laughs> it's so good to see everyone come on here. You know, it really is. It's like, it's like being in church and watching people walk through the door. James Carter, as I see James's name, I want to tell everyone that this Sunday, because this was James's idea, uh, <laughs> we're going to have a cookout after church. Uh, around 1230 or so we're gonna have hot dogs and condiments and drinks just for a little time of fellowship to celebrate summer and celebrate uh, the, the loosening of the uh, of the of the mandates from Massachusetts I'll get into that in a minute but hey James hey Tony God bless you always good to see you Tony I love you uh, Danica God bless you good to see you Danica and Eva and Sandy's on and let's see Oh, Katie's uh, going to try to go. Yeah, I did see Katie's name before. Let me check that out. Lorinda, God bless you. Good to see you. And Sandy, another Sandy. Pastor Bill is here. Uh, Dolores is here. Pauline is here. Pauline, so good seeing you at church these last uh, weeks. Pamela, my dear wife, is here. Uh, yeah, Tony, you said come down a little more. You mean like with this? Oh, you mean for the guitar. I think that's what it was. I, yeah, I missed that one. Okay, Katie Lund is here. Katie, we've been praying for you. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, hope you're out of the hospital. Let us know how you're doing, okay? I tried to call you, but I couldn't get through. Uh, Donna Susie, God bless you. Alinda, God bless you. Uh, okay, Pamela, the heavens are roaring. Okay, Sister Patty, God bless you. Uh, Tony said, as soon as we hit the first note, buckets of water came down from the heavens. Man, God loves to hear his people praise him, that's for sure. Anita, God bless you. Good to see you on here. Uh, you, you, Hutch, you, God bless you. Wow, you, I was going to lift you up in prayer tonight. I'm going to do it right now. Uh, for everyone that's on here, uh, you may see under the comments a brother by the name of Hugh Hutchinson. We have been praying for you, but I want to pray for you tonight. Uh, Hugh is undergoing some chemo treatments down in North Carolina. He's, he's a New York boy, but he's down in North Carolina. And so uh, I want to pray for Hugh right now. Father God, Lord, touch our brother Hugh and use that chemo to, to take care of the cancer. Let him be well. Let, it, let the side effects not be too, too great for him. Uh, Lord, strengthen him and encourage him in his faith, in his health. Bring, uh, bring him uh, good Christian fellowship there in North Carolina and bless him, Lord. Keep him healthy and strong. Let us get a good report really soon. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hey, Jerry Ellis, God bless you. And Jeannie. Uh, Edna and Bill Unger are here. Okay, yeah, I got you, Tony. Uh, okay. Uh, Doreen, good to see you. Hope you get that signal straightened out. Uh, I'm going direct tonight with the, you know, what do you call it? The, the direct line so I it's not on my end I don't think uh, okay Angela hey Angela God bless you good to see you on here uh, Pamela says it's about the storm here the wind is stirring up and the rain clouds are hovering it did get a little darker pretty quickly out there all right well anyway uh, good to see everyone God bless you Hugh we'll be in touch we will be in touch um, <clears throat> a couple of quick announcements uh, we did recognize some new members on Sunday, in case you missed it. Uh, Dolores McCracken, uh, Roseanne Bartlett, Lisa Jones, and Aria LeBlanc became official members of the church. Hallelujah. Um, we are scheduled to have a teen challenge on June the 27th at the church, uh, both morning services. 
And I, we're thinking of having a water baptism that night. We, we said we would have one in June. The week before is Father's Day. That wouldn't be good. And the week before that is probably too soon. So uh, <laughs> I see that, James. Yeah, if it's raining, I don't know. I got a long walk home. I better do something. I don't know. <laughs> um, so water baptism and teen challenge on the 27th. Uh, this Sunday, as I mentioned, we're, we're going to be having a cookout. Um, we do have uh, a couple of, let's say, I think three or four people did volunteer to help out. But if you're interested in helping, uh, please contact me or contact James. And uh, we'll get you set up there. We're not, we're not going to be fancy. We just want to set up the grill and get the hot dogs and get some water and sodas out there and just have a time of fellowship. We've been, we've been cooped up for too long. So we just want to do something to get, you know, get going out there. All right. Um, so as far as the masks go, I did send out an email, but just for clarification. Uh, so what happened is this weekend... The mandated aspect of all this is being lifted. No one's mandated to wear um, uh, a mask. Uh, if you've been vaccinated, you really don't have to. If you haven't been vaccinated, uh, the state is um, advising us to wear a mask. So it's not mandated. You don't have to. Uh, you can if you want to. And, and same thing with the seating, uh, social distancing. Um, if uh, we don't have to do that anymore, but we re repositioned the chairs in the church uh, to give more room uh, all around, seating numbers and uh, and, and um, seating spaces as well. So we should be all set there. But I, I realize that this weekend is also Memorial Day weekend, and typically uh, some people go away. Now I don't know if that's going to happen this week, but we're open for business, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing whoever can make it on Sunday. The fellowship, to hear the word, and uh, to have a picnic afterwards. So if you come to the early service, come back at 12:30 for a hot dog. Amen. Uh, yeah, eth Ethernet, Ethernet. I don't know. Yeah, we have a direct line. So, all right. So can everyone hit your share button? We've got 18 people on here. We'd love to get uh, 30 or 35 people on here before the night's over. So if you hit your your share button you may pick up some of your friends from your page uh i know I, I put it on mine let me see if i'm still on here yes i'm still on so that's good all right well let's get into the word um someone <laughs> by the way someone had asked me uh last week um if i could share my notes from our study of the armor of god that was in Ephesians chapter 6. And I said, yeah, we did that a few years ago. And um, I'm, I'll be happy to find my notes and, and make, make, a copy for, make copies for you or whatever. But anyway, I found my notes. And uh, well, I got an umbrella here just in case it uh, begins to rain. Yeah, so here I am uh, under the umbrella. Oh, no, that's blocking the light. That's, that doesn't work. So uh, anyway, thank you, Pamela. Um, <laughs> where was I? Oh, yeah, so I looked at the notes, and um, that study in Ephesians was 2015. That was six years ago. And I thought, my goodness, we've been, th this is our Wednesday night study. Um, so six years ago, we were in Ephesians, right? Then we got into 1 Timothy, then 2 Timothy, then Revelation, and then we started Romans uh, at the beginning of 2020 and here we are 2021 we're still in Romans towards the end of the chapter uh, end of the book but um yeah so anyway we've been we we've been doing these line by line studies on Wednesday night for six years which I think is really great I, I really I love doing it and I think it's helpful for everyone to really understand the word deeper and better so we're in Romans 15 tonight uh, Romans 15. Now last week, let's see here, we, uh, we mentioned that this is a continuation of chapter 14. It just kind of flows together. Um, 
It just started the downpour. Yeah, it sure did. Wow, it got darker too. Um, Pamela, thank you for the umbrella. I'm gonna. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need it later. Uh, okay. So anyway, so Romans 15. If you want to turn there, I'll just give you a little little bit of info as we get started here. Uh, the idea is Paul is telling the church in Rome to help the new believers or the weaker believers. Um, we saw that all throughout chapter 14. Uh, chapter 14, verses 15 and 20 uh, say things like, um, don't destroy what God has begun. Don't destroy the work you know, in, in the newer believers' lives. Um, that God has started for the sake of food or the sake of days that are celebrated or, or non-important events. That this is the, and I want to make sure we clarify. This is not about doctrine. This is about event, cultural events. Um, we talked all about that last time. I don't want to repeat it tonight. But, um, so we, we, don't, we don't hurt new believers. We, we help them. We, we kind of flow with them as they work out some issues in their lives regarding incidental things. Doctrine, we have every right to clarify doctrine <clears throat> in a loving way, in a creative way, in a kind way. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians uh, to speak the truth in love. So whenever we get into doctrine or any, anything really, we need to speak the truth in love. So chapter 15, verse number one, it, just, it says, We then who are strong or we then who are mature, or we then who are wise, or we who are settled in doctrine and see the bigger picture. Because someone may come into the church and, and they get the, the salvation message. They realize they're sinners, they realize Jesus paid for their, the penalty of their sins on the cross, and they realize that they're born again in Christ. But they may have all these other issues going on that, uh, you know, they're not, maybe they're not appropriate, but they're not doctrinal issues. Um, so anyway, so we then that are strong, bear with the scruples of the weak, bear with the, the struggles of the weak, bear with, uh, you know, the new, newer people, newer Christians that are kind of trying to work out their salvation and, and, and don't please ourselves or, and do not please um, ourselves. And so what that means is we then that are strong, uh, let's not... Um, what's the word I use? Exert our personal opinions or personal beliefs, non-doctrinal issues on new believers, you know, regarding things that aren't that important. Uh, in, in this case, food and days that they celebrate, um, tattoos, ear piercings, etc., etc. Um, because in doing so, we would be boosting our ego and pleasing ourselves and making it more about us than about the Lord and about the word. So um, he does get into verse number three of Jesus's examples. But um, if you remember, um, if you want to look at Jesus's example, he always, <laughs> he always uh, was bearing with the scruples of the weak. And he was never pleasing himself. He was bearing with the scruples of the 12 for sure. Um, especially Peter and his attitude and, and, his, and also with Judas. And his mission, you know, uh, he was also bearing with the scruples of the 70 that went out to preach the gospel. And they came out kind of boasting of what, what they were doing. And, and the Lord said, don't boast in that, but boast that your names are written down in glory. So he was, he was, he was uh, bearing with the scruples of the weak. Uh, think of the woman at the well in John 4. Uh, she had five husbands and the one she was living with wasn't even her husband. And she kind of was beating around the bush. She didn't want to admit it, and Jesus kind of read her mail, and he was dealing with her, kind of bearing with her. Um, she ended up getting, getting saved. Uh, what about the adulterous woman, you know, who was caught? Uh, he, he was bearing with the, the scruples of the weak. Uh, Zacchaeus, uh, certainly he was a, a crooked tax collector and uh, kind of a difficult person, but Jesus wanted to have dinner with him at his house. And even the rich young ruler, um, that the rich young ruler that we know of never really surrendered to the Lord, but Jesus was bearing with him. He was trying to help him, help facilitate his walk with, with, uh, with him. 
So anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, so I want to look at a few things here. So what, what we're saying here, verse number one, it's our responsibility, church, to help and not hinder new believers. So Galatians 1, uh, 6, 1. I think I read this last week, but just want to make sure. 6, 1 and 2. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, in other words, he's weak. You who are spiritual or mature or strong, uh, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, not, you know, heavy-handedly, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. Uh, very important to have that attitude and disposition. Uh, we're not here to lord it over anyone and and tell someone how much we know about the Bible and how holy we are and this and that. We're here to help people uh, work out their own, uh, their own weaknesses. And then in uh, James chapter 5, we read this. Brethren, if anyone among you wonders from the truth, so it is possible... Uh, and someone turns him back to the truth, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So the idea is that if someone's weak and someone's getting caught up in something, uh, we who are spiritual, we who are strong uh, and mature, we, we kind of guide them lovingly back into the fold. I think this was the case, uh, if you remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, when... Uh, the adultery was going on in the church there in Corinth. Um, and Paul said to turn that one over to Satan. Um, when he came back in, in uh, 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 2, but I'm not sure. When he came back, Paul had to tell the church, okay, you've disciplined him enough. Now, you know, love him back into the family of God because otherwise he would really get discouraged and not want to come back, and you don't want that to happen. So anyway, so Romans 15, 1 and 2, uh, you who are strong, bear, the, bear the, with the scruples of the weak, and not, not to please yourself. Verse 2, let, us please, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. So we don't please ourselves, we look out for the pleasing of or the edification of our neighbor. And uh, that brings in a whole nother a whole other thing to talk about. Uh, how are we doing, everybody? I see 15 people on here. I would like to get some more. I don't know what we could do about that. It might just be one of those nights. So if you could spread the word, share your page or whatever. Okay, so not pleasing ourselves, but pleasing others, leading to their good and for their edification. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 22, when he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second one is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And so verse number two, Romans 15, two, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. Um, we said last week in 1 Corinthians 9, 22, um, Paul to the weak, Paul became as though he was weak, that he might win some that were weak. To the Jew, he became as a Jew. To the Greek, he became as a Greek, etc., etc. Um, but we can, we can relate to the, those that are weak by being humble and considerate and, you know, conscientious, empathetic towards them and, uh, and their, whatever they're dealing with. I want to read uh, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. This is an example of, of uh, Paul ad, uh, encouraging the church of Philippi to uh, help these two sisters get along with each other. Therefore, my beloved and long for brethren, my crown and, and my joy, stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore Iodia, I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I, I urge you, true companion, 
uh, to help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So he's urging the church of Philippi to help these women to get along, work out their differences or whatever, and get reestablished uh, in their faith. Uh, Paul doesn't want to lose anybody. And that's, I think that that's every pastor's heart. Uh, we don't want to lose anybody, especially over issues that have to do with people. But unfortunately, as some of you may know, sometimes that does happen. Feelings get hurt, and uh, people get offended, and they, they leave, and they get all kind of... Thank you, Alinda, for doing that. Okay, so verse number three. For even Christ did not please himself. So we have this progression. We don't please ourselves. We please other people. And Christ is now our example who did not please himself. Um, as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. Uh, this is from Psalm 69, verse 9. And here Paul is taking a scripture from the Old Testament, uh, which David wrote, and David was referring to himself. Interestingly, see in verse number 3, where it says, The reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Uh, in my New King James Version, the me is with a capital M. Uh, when I go to Psalm 69, verse 9, when I read the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me, the me <coughs> is a lowercase m, uh, meaning David. And here Paul is referring that to apply to Jesus. So this is what you would consider the... Uh, the law of double reference. When there's a prophecy given, it has a double reference. Um, um, pertaining to people right then and there, as well as pertaining to something or someone in the future. And uh, that whole psalm, Psalm 69, is what is, what is called a, a messianic psalm, referring to Jesus. But it did have application for David at the time, but it was prophetic in the sense that it foretold something that was going to happen way in the future. So, so G Paul is saying even, even Jesus didn't please himself, but the reproaches, people who, who hated God uh, put it on him. He took their abuse. He, he didn't try to fight back. He didn't try to please himself in any way. He gave himself, but he took it, indicating that our attitude should be, we should be able to, to, um, to not please ourselves and help others get on with their faith um, so we have to give our, give our heart away, give our, give our wisdom away, give our love away. Uh, and in doing so, sometimes it could be, you know, it, it, could be, it could be a challenge, especially if we're insecure people when we want all the love and we want the attention. But uh, Paul is saying here, you know, if we're mature, we need to give, give that up and give that away. And so that's what he's using Jesus as an example. Jesus did not please himself. It's, in fact, in uh, Hebrews 12, it says that Jesus uh, endured the cross and the shame of the cross, uh, despised the shame, but endured the shame for the joy that was set before him. So he was looking beyond the cross to see that uh, his victory or his, his, his satisfaction would not be at the cross. It would be after the cross when he's resurrected and ascended. And so we need to have the same type of uh, attitude towards others that may be, may be challenging us, may be pressing us a little bit. Uh, we need to have the heart of Christ towards them. Uh, let me just say hello here to David Drew. And hey, David, how you doing? Uh, Alinda says, I have a few people on my Facebook page that live up there in, around Haverhill. Well, good. Maybe they'll join us tonight. Okay. Uh, Philippians 2. Can we go there for a minute? Philippians 2, verse 5, says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Right? Um, so let this mind, so in other words, think like this, that Jesus in all of his glory left heaven and came to earth to live on earth to give his life as a ransom and to go to the cross, even to the point of death. So let that mind that was in Jesus also be in each of us. Uh, that's what Paul is saying here, you know, chapters 14 and 15. He's saying basically the same thing over and over, just in different ways. 
so, okay, so then verse number four uh, is a little bit of a change of pace where he says, whatever things were written before, as in verse number three, which is an Old Testament scripture, uh, as I said, Psalm 69, verse nine, whatever things were written before Old Testament were written for our learning that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. <clears throat> so let's talk about verse number four a little bit. Uh, the things that are written before, uh, he is referring to the Old Testament scriptures, the prophets, uh, the, the prophecies, and, and the general teachings in the Old Testament. Uh, they were written before for our learning that we might have hope and we, we may have a deeper understanding of the New Testament when we consider the Old Testament. Um, I want to read a couple of passages here. Uh, Matthew 5 and verse 17, very interesting scripture in, in this context. Uh, Jesus said, do, do not think that I came to destroy the law, the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but I've come to fulfill the law. So when Paul says these things are written in verse number four, Romans 15, for our learning that we might have patience and hope, uh, patience and comfort of the scriptures that we might have hope. Um, this is what Jesus was referring to. We're not doing away with the principles in the law. The law is fulfilled in Jesus, but what was written has value for us as we go deeper into the things of God. Have you ever noticed when you, when you do study the Old Testament and you, you align it with the New Testament, it makes our belief in the New Testament deeper and richer, especially if we were to study, for instance, um, well, the role of Noah in the flood or the role of Abraham being called to be a leader or the role of Moses to be the lawgiver or David and all of his different things. Or if we were, were to study uh, the, um, the feast, the Jewish feast of the Old Testament and the application of what they have in the New Testament, it would be very enriching uh, in our faith uh, to do that. So that's what he's saying in Romans 15. He's saying the, the things that were written before are written for our learning. And he, he just quoted it in verse number three. And in verse number four, he's kind of like, you know, just uh, enhancing his view of why he just did what he did. And if you look at verses nine through 12, he does it like four more times before the end of this chapter. Uh, and he's done it earlier uh, as we were studying in, in the previous books of Roman, Romans. Okay, so uh, whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Um, I wanted to go to 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 10. Everybody with me? I know we're jumping around a little bit, but I want to... I want to bring out some deeper points here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, uh, Paul kind of tells the same principle to the Corinthians. He says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under the cloud. Remember the, the glory cloud? All passed through the sea, that is the Red Sea. All were baptized into Moses, that is the law of Moses, uh, in the cloud and, and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, the, the manna, remember? All drank the same spiritual drink. Remember, the, the water came from the rock. For they drank of that spiritual rock that, that followed them. That rock was Christ. But with most of them, listen to this, with most of them, God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Their lives, their lifestyle, they were all over the place. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. For as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Uh, I believe he's referring to when uh, Moses went up to Mount Sinai to get the law, the people on, at the bottom of the mountain made the golden calf and they worshiped and they partied and they had a big a big thing and they were in the flesh 
uh, verse 8, nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Um, we would have to get into that, but there was a, war, a battle. Uh, nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted Christ and were destroyed by serpents. Uh, nor complain as some of them also complain and they were, they were destroyed by the destroyer. But anyway, verse 11, all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. So all the things in the Old Testament that we read and study uh, are written for our, our admonition um, and for our example. So that's why when we preach and teach on Old Testament principles, they're very encouraging for us. For instance, I, uh, some years ago, I, I spent quite a, a, lot, a lot of time uh, speaking about Joseph uh, in the Old Testament and all the different qualities of Joseph being sold by his brethren, rejected, um, being obedient, yet being charged uh, unlawfully and all these different things he went through, how God elevated him at the end and he was a blessing to his family and so forth. That's how the chosen people got to Egypt in the first place. Um, so that whole, that whole episode is fantastic. And Daniel's another one. I mean, all of them are, are wonderful examples where we draw strength from. And, we, and with that background, we, we, we put on top of that the teachings of the New Testament. Remember when Jesus at the Last Supper, he, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the New Covenant. And uh, if we were to study Hebrews, um, several times in the book of Hebrews, uh, there's reference to the New Testament being the better covenant but the better covenant is built upon the first covenant, the first covenant, or the, the old, the old testament. Uh, the the new testament is built upon the old testament, and uh, the new covenant is built upon the old covenant. But Jesus instituted the new covenant. So, um, we we Gentiles uh, probably went about this a little bit backwards, but we had no choice because we didn't know because we weren't Jewish and we didn't know all the things in Judaism. But someone who is, a, who is a Jewish person that accepts Jesus as Messiah, they probably have a more well-rounded understanding of what the stories meant and what they pointed to and how Jesus came to fulfill all that. And their, their faith could be, um, could be better rounded or, or, or deeper as a result of that. So we may have some catching up to do, but that's, that's what we do. We do, we do catch up. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16, uh, you probably know this, uh, but it says that um, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and, and Paul is referring to the Old Testament Scripture, but all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, back in Romans 15, 4, whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. I wonder if, uh, hey, Gary Feldman, how you doing, our dear brother? Uh, Gary, just talking about um, Messianic Jews who have an understanding of the Old Testament, and when they receive Jesus, uh, more sooner than later they they put the two together that the stories and the principles of the old testament were all pointing to messiah in jesus christ we gentiles uh we didn't know all that stuff so we had to we have to learn it <laughs> so uh, although i must say i mean some some of us may know some like i knew the story of like david and goliath and noah and the flood i knew daniel and the lion's den and, and that's kind of stuff but I never made the connection between old and new until I received Jesus and started to study the Bible. Okay, so um, so moving along in chapter 15. Verse number 5, I would say, is a prayer. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another according to Christ Jesus. Remember the context of what we're talking about, that they weren't like-minded. Uh, chapter 14 and verse 10, you're judging your brother, you're showing contempt for your brother, 
simply over food and what days they celebrate. And is it that important, you know? So he's encouraging them in 15.5, May the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. So whether you're a new believer or an old believer, really the, the weight is on the mature believer to accept the newer believer with all of their stuff, with all of their questions, with all of their uncertainties. Because we who are mature or, or, or have been in the faith longer should understand that that's part of the process. Um, we read, read in chapter 14, verses 3 and 4, that God has received these people. God is able to make them stand, so they're, they, meaning there's a period of growth that God will help them to grow. We shouldn't be a stumbling block for them. We should be encouraging them to grow deeper in their faith. Amen. All right. So, verse 5. May the God of patience and comfort reminds me of a scripture in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are, who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And so the God of all comfort. So he's praying in verse number five, may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. Um, I just want to talk about being like-minded uh, toward one another, according to Christ Jesus. Um, according to Christ Jesus. So we have to be like-minded the way Jesus was, the way Jesus acted, the way he presented his teachings to others, the way he showed patience to everyone. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus said, uh, Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So um, as, as Jesus is uh, encouraging us to take his yoke upon us and learn from him, learn that he's gentle and lowly, um, we can be like-minded with each other with the same sense of humility and gentleness. That's basically what he's saying there. Um, So over in Philippians chapter 2, uh, we read this, uh, Philippians 2, verse number 1. If there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, which of course there is all of that, uh, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Uh, that basically sums it up pretty good there. And then, then Paul goes into the teaching about Jesus who emptied himself, giving us an example to follow. And right after that example, uh, Paul says to the church there, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, there's a whole process here uh, that needs to take place. But Paul is praying in verse number five, May the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, uh, so that, um, so that, well, first of all, in verse number five, so that the agape would be flowing, John 13, uh, new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Hello, Michael Disjardins. God bless you, my friend. Um, so let, let the agape flow between each other, brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse number six, so that with one mind and one mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we're not making a, a, a united sound of praise to the Lord. 
uh, we're, we, so that we, verse number six, so that we could glorify God cleanly and purely uh, without hindrance in one mind, in one mouth, in unity, in brotherhood, <clears throat> in power and anointing. Because there's something special about being united. You know, we're going to look at a couple of verses in the book of Acts where the church was united in one accord and how God uh, used those times to totally pour out his spirit and, and bless those churches and bless their ministries. And so just want to talk about that for a minute. So we're, we're Romans 15, 6, but Paul is praying that uh, the God of patience would, would help everyone to be like-minded towards one another so that with one mind and one mouth, they could glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's praying that there would be unity in the body so that together they could worship God without, without angst or without problems or without a heaviness or without you know, conflict. Uh, um, there's nothing worse than conflict in a church. Um, some of you may be aware of that. You may have experienced that. But uh, when, there's, uh, when there's discord, uh, someone's upset about something and they, they start you know, getting angry and holding grudges and gossiping about people, it totally stifles the work of God in that particular church. So um, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Paul. We need to be praying, verses 5 and 6, that the God of patience and comfort I mean, he's patience and comfort toward us, right? So that, that the God of patience and comfort would grant us to be like-minded towards one another, that we would be patient and, and, uh, and comforting towards one another so that we could worship God in peace and in harmony uh, with one mind and in one mouth glorify the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go, let's go for a little walk here through the book of Acts. Uh, Acts chapter 2. Um, uh, Pastor Bill had preached on this on Sunday um, and he, verse number 1 of Acts 2 when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place they were in one accord and, and if you know the story uh, Jesus was crucified, resurrected uh, for 40 days he appeared on the 40th day, Acts chapter 1, he ascended into glory. And he said in Acts 1.8, he said, uh, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the outermost parts of the world. But he also said, you know, go into all the world, but don't go just yet. Wait until you receive this power, and then go. So they were waiting in the upper room uh, for... Um, well, uh, Acts 2, 1 says, when the day of Pentecost, so Penta means 50 days from the Passover. So when Jesus died, 50 days passed when uh, the Holy Ghost fell. And so 40 days is when he ascended. So they were together for 10 days waiting on the Lord in one accord. That was miraculous. Uh, probably fasting, praying, uh, remembering what Jesus had said, um, um, greetings uh, those of you that just signed on. Good to see you here. Uh, we welcome you. But uh, anyway, for ten days they were waiting on the Lord together in one accord. They, they weren't bickering, they weren't fighting, they weren't pointing their finger at somebody saying, "Why did you leave Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane?" Uh, or whatever. They were in one accord. And in that one accordness, the Holy Spirit fell. The sound of a rush, rushing mighty wind came and uh, images of cloven tongues landed on their heads and they were all filled with the Spirit and they spoke in other tongues. But they were in unity. They were in one accord. And uh, this is why at our church, uh, one of our fundamental themes, and our theme is that people grow at, at New Life, G-R-O-W. Uh, an acronym meaning grounded in the word R is building relationships O is outreach and W is worship with passion but um, building relationships very important thing to do as evidenced by this teaching in Romans 15 when we, when we are not in one accord um, God doesn't move 
or if he's trying to move, we, we, we would probably miss it because we're so preoccupied with somebody else that's, you know, that we're having a problem with. Um, so just, to, just a little side note on that. Jesus did say, if you have a problem with someone, if someone's offended you, uh, go talk to them about it. Don't talk to someone else about it. Talk to them about it. That would eliminate a lot of trouble right there. Um, <laughs> And if that doesn't work out, get someone else to go with you. Let, let you know, the three of you talk. And if that doesn't work, tell it to the church, meaning the, the leaders of the church, and let other mature people come or other leaders come. And if it works, you've gained a brother. If it doesn't work, you know, let them go, and hopefully in time they'll, they'll come to their senses and try to work it out you know, the, best way they can, the best way that they can. Okay, so one accord. Okay, Roman, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 4. We see another example, um, starting in verse number 22. This is after uh, Peter and John were released from prison. They came back to the, the home of, I think it was John Mark's mother. And uh, it says, being let go, they went to their own companions. I'm in Acts 4, 23. They reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they had heard them, they raised their voice to God with one accord. So here you have, you know, some time later, so Acts 2, now Acts 4, uh, a different episode. But again, they're in one accord, and, um, and they're praising God. They're lifting their voice. They're honoring the Lord. They raised uh, their voice to the Lord. And uh, verse 31 says, When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And uh, so, you know, so as they're in one accord, they're worshiping, praising God, praying to God, and God responds to their unity uh, by, by filling them all with the Holy Spirit, a, a refilling, if you will, and then the power to speak the word of God with boldness. What a blessing. And see, without being in one accord, without that unity, they probably would have missed that blessing. Let me, let me read what James is saying here. There's power and strength and unity. James says, pulpit ministry is very important, but relation, relationship ministry is also, absolutely. Most people uh, find themselves in church without first being ministered to through a, a relationship type of, yeah, that's right. So most people come to church as a result of being in a relationship with other people, like another Christian that invites them or tells them or something like that. So there's a relationship to begin with. And, um, you know, was, this, this theme that we have, the growth theme, uh, I, I really like it a lot. It's easy to understand. It's easy to implement. Well, it's easy to teach on. It's not so easy to implement because working with people can be very difficult. And I thought, I wonder if some people, you know, some people may not realize how important other people are. And we need to leave room for some people that really just want to come to church and, and worship the Lord. And they're not familiar with the word fellowship. You know, we, we Pentecostals, we kind of have taken fellowship to another level, you know. Um, but for some new people, they, they may not understand that. And they just want to go to church and worship the Lord and sing their songs and hear the word and very politely excuse themselves and leave. And that's okay. You know, I think the Holy Spirit will bring conviction to that as they go along. But uh, we do, I was thinking that maybe some people are, are not, uh, you know, when they hear that this is what we're about, growing in the word, that's good. Outreach oriented, that's good. Worship with passion, that's good. But building relationships, G-R-O-W, that means I have to get to know people and, you know, work things out with people. And our, our intention with that R word actually in the beginning was to help people work out relationships in their family. Um, and, and then because we've seen a lot of dysfunction in families um, over the years. But, now, but, but it really does extend to the church as well. Many people find their family in church. Many people don't have a family outside of church. The church is definitely their family. So, okay, so let's go to another scripture. Uh, Acts chapter 5. Uh, I don't want to read all this, but this is the story of Ananias and Sapphira who lied to Peter and lied to the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Lord basically took them out. 
Um, and uh, <laughs> that was a very difficult time. But verse number 11, so Acts 5, 11 says, Great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So there had to be a kind of a purging in the church, but here we are back in one accord again. And, and uh, the end of that is, in verse 16, the multitudes gathered together from the surrounding cities, bringing sick people, and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Um, verse 14, multi I'm sorry, 15, the sick were healed. 14, multitudes were brought, brought to them. So when they were in one accord, again, the healings happened, the blessing happened, the anointing of God, um, all these different things, you know, as a result of being in one accord. And then lastly, I want to go to Acts chapter 6. Uh, Acts chapter 6 uh, is the story of the uh, church in Jerusalem uh, where there was murmuring. They were not in one accord. <laughs> the, the Hellenist uh, believers were complaining that they weren't being cared for properly uh, in the distribution to the saints, either food or, clothe or clothing or both. And they were grumbling. And so... Um, uh, let's see. The 12 got together. The 12 apostles told them, uh, we don't want to wait on the tables. You pick for yourself seven men full of the spirit and wisdom, etc., and let them take care of that. And it says in, uh, let's see, verse number four, verse number five, it says the saying pleased the whole multitude. So here they're pleased. They're back in one accord again. And, um, they chose those seven people, and the, the result of that is in verse number seven, the word of God spread, the number of disciples multiplied greatly, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. So again, uh, hey, Johnny Brenz, good to see you. God bless you. Uh, we're talking about unity in the body. Um, so we want to strive for unity in the body of Christ. Of course, this, is, this pertains to each local church. Um, you know, we are, we are new life. I mean, there's other churches. Uh, First Baptist has the same principle to apply that they need to be in unity. And um, uh, the River Church needs to be in unity and Riverside Church. All, you know, so we all have the same principles to go by. But when we are in unity and we're, we're running in one accord, we could sense the power and the blessing of God upon our lives and upon our ministries. Um, as opposed to uh, always putting out brush fires, always putting out conflicts in the church. It's draining on, on the leadership, for one thing. It's draining on the people to deal with all that stuff. Uh, so anyway, we're in Romans 15, and uh, Paul is praying in verses 5 and 6. May the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's praying to have unity and to have a togetherness that God would be able to, to, to receive their praise uh, as, a, as a united and a united front. Um, one more scripture I wanted to read before we go into verse number seven, but Ephesians 4. Um, Let's see, I see the word Ella up here. Pam Ella, ah. <laughs> I see that, James. Pam Ella. Ephesians, Ephesians 4, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. With, you know, every time you get into the word, you, you read these passages to be humble, to stay humble, to be broken before God, to be humble with other people, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you were all called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And so there's that unity. We're all part of the body of Christ. Uh, so very, very important. So then w with that, all that said, back in Romans 15, verse 17, he says, Therefore, oh, it's five after eight already? Oh, my goodness. I didn't, I didn't pick up on that, folks. Sorry. Therefore, receive one another, just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. So I'm going to end right there. Thanks for the uh, notification that my time is up. I had no, <laughs> I was lost in it, to tell you the truth. But therefore, because of all those issues, all those things that Paul had said, uh, he's praying for them to receive one another. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop right there. Receive one another. So listen, when you go to church on Sunday, when you fellowship on this live stream, you may, you, even on the live stream, someone may say something that you say, man, what do, what do they mean by that? Or where are they coming from? Just let's be patient. You know, let's be patient. Let's be thankful that people are on here. Um, thank you all. <laughs> um, hey, Jerry, I see that comment. Um, oh, oh, you were going to tell me that, that my time was up. I got you. Um, yeah, so this, this whole message, where Romans 14 and 15, is about helping the newer believer or the believer with some baggage to feel welcome, to feel, you know, invited. Doesn't mean we, we don't deal with doctrines. We do. We absolutely do. Um, but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right there. All right, so our, our numbers were down tonight, but, but I had, wow, almost 3,000 hearts. It's a lot of hearts. Thank you for those hearts. A lot of love, a um, lot of thumbs up. And uh, anyway, so anyway, why don't we pray? We'll say a prayer, and uh, I'll, I'll take a minute to respond on these comments. I'll get back to you all. But let's go to the Lord one more time here tonight. Dear Lord God, thank you. Uh, thank you for the study. Thank you for people that are on the live stream. Thank you, Lord, that there's a hunger for your word. Lord, I, I pray that um, tonight's study will not only become head knowledge, it'll be heart knowledge. That we'll remember this at just the right time when a new believer may be driving us crazy with some incidental things they're worried about. And we, we might have a tendency to be to be harsh or sharp with them. Help us to remember to be patient and loving and to encourage everyone to be a part of the family of God. Lord, we're all in this together. We need to be sensitive to one another and sensitive to you. Lord, ultimately, I pray that we all would, be, would remember how patient and long-suffering you are to each one of us. I know you are for me, and we need to apply that same principle to other people in our lives the way you apply it to us. So, Lord, thank you. May your blessing be upon everyone. Um, we pray for a good rest of the week. We pray for a good uh, Thursday talk tomorrow and um, a good men's ministry tomorrow night on the Zoom meeting and a great couple of services on Sunday and a great picnic on Sunday afternoon. We give you all praise. We give you all glory. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. All right, everyone, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to sign off and say hello on the comments, okay? So I'll be uh, responding in just a minute. I love you. Bye.